What's up folks? The much anticipated follow up to the ZDP 189 Bunka is here. I have it. It's the Bunka Black Damascus. It's made by Suncraft, designed by Sharp Edge Shop, and I'm here to discuss some of the lesser talked about details in my personal experience after using it for a few months. Where to begin? First up, as per usual, the stats on paper. The steel is VG10, arguably the most popular and widely used steel that Japanese makers will use. At a 60 to 61 rock ball hardness, what I don't think is evident, or at least not all that obvious unless you inspect knives really closely like this all the time, is the sandwiching effect that's happening here on the blade. So you've got 33 layers of Damascus cladding around this VG10 core. The entire blade is not patterned steel. And you can see it a little bit more closely here if you look at the spot which comes in pretty thin at just 1.8 millimeters without any smooth bevels for your fingers. I'm not bashing that sandwiching move, I just thought it would provide you some value if you're considering this knife or if you aren't really familiar with Damascus itself. As I mentioned, this is a collaboration between the guys at Sharp Edge Shop, picking out the length, the profile, the handle materials, the Saya design, which we will get to in a minute. But it's produced by the team at Suncraft Company that's been in business in Seki, Japan since 1948. Putting it next to the ZDP, 189 bunker here, it's pretty clear that these blades come from very different makers. They are very different knives. The most obvious being in their length. The Damascus's blade comes in at 160 millimeters, which depending on your workflow and preference might either be a deal breaker or a lifesaver. More on that when we talk about my experience. The weight on this is light at just 150 grams, which you might notice more if you're coming from a heftier Western style knife, but it is actually, believe it or not, heavier than the ZDP bunker, something that surprised me when I put them both on the scale side by side just to make sure. I was scratching my head for a little bit on that one. Moving on into talking about handle materials, we've got a really gorgeous dark brown octagonal shaped Paco wood handle here. If we're really gonna zoom in and check on this knife handle a little bit closer, I don't think it's all that clear whether or not this is two separate pieces of wood here because this is definitely a painted segment. It doesn't seem to be like a Corian spacer or anything like that. I can definitely feel a bit of a separation here. If you're really geeking out on handle materials and you wanna know a little bit more, the guys at Sharp Edge Shop are great at their customer service, so reach out and ask them what's going on in the handle if you're really gonna nerd out about that. I personally love this color on knife handles. I gravitate towards darker woods myself, which might not float your boat if you like lighter woods like magnolia or something you might find on another wah style handle. It's kind of a cheeky way to get that uh, thing that you'll sometimes see on knives like this, the togiharu that I had where it's wood leading into water buffalo horn, but in kind of like a fun budget way because this is wood throughout. This is definitely wood, not bone. A unique point that I haven't seen all that often that I wanted to touch on before we get into the Saya, the blade fits into the handle with a plastic fitting, which you can see here. It's not any wood, there isn't any adhesive that you can visibly see, it's not messy. It's a very clean insertion, albeit with some minor gaps, which I think could have possibly been fit a little bit more flush if it's gonna be pressed in all the way like this. I haven't had any crazy issues with food getting stuck or being difficult to clean, but that's just something for you to know. Okay, the Saya, which is included in this purchase price, is made from walnut wood, the story is that those Slovenian folks at Sharp Edge Shop have a hometown where the dragon is the symbol of that town. And that's more or less a fun way to commemorate their collaboration between themselves and Japan, where also, quote, a dragon is a majestic and mystical creature of Japanese mythology. There's more info about that on their site, which is linked below if you want some more of that story. The pin for the Saya is not attached to the main body in any sort of way via a string or something like that, so caution yourself there. And you've got the Sharp Edge Shop logo on the opposite side. Other than that, the fit is nice, the construction is solid, and it gives the knife this other different wood texture and color when it's all sheathed up, which is kind of nice. All right, that is enough paper stats. Let's talk about my experience, shall we? This is totally weird flex, but okay. But at this point in my career, when I cook, I have the luxury of typically having as much counter space as I want. If I wanted, I could literally show up with a four foot long cutting board and not really be in anyone's way. But it wasn't always like that. I can distinctly remember before French Laundry got their fancy schmancy renovation when I was a Komi, on days when we would have lunch service, we would be working off of the same cutting board. So I would have no choice but to bust out a petty knife and leave my proper chef knives in my bag because they were just too clunky. And I know some of you are in the same boat. Your physical station real estate during certain parts of your day might be limited. And I think that's what's great about this knife is that you can get the nimble K-tip 
dip chef knife performance without taking up too much room on your station. So in other words, if you're optimizing for space right now, or if you see this filling a void in your bag lengthwise, you should just get this because it's a great blade. Now thinking about another community that I know exists on this channel, but doesn't get nearly enough love because it's not in my wheelhouse because my experience was so savory focused, hands up in the comments if you're a pastry chef, please, we wanna know where you're at. Chances are, and I don't really mean anything offensive by this, you could probably get through 80 plus percent of your prep list with just a paring knife, unless you've got some really heavy fruit fabrication to do. That is a tongue twister. Fruit fabrication, fruit fabrication, fruit fabrication. And that's arguably why there's this stereotype of people that work on the sweet side as having dull knives or poor knife skills. If you've got the ambition or the desire to improve your knife skills, but you don't want to get a Ninox or a $400 Misono, this might be able to check enough boxes for you to feel proud to bust out this and prep with it. And I think knowing that you've got something in your bag that fits your needs might be perfect. Another segment that comes to mind for me, if you're someone who's had fantastic experience using Santoku knives because they're typically shorter, but you kind of get embarrassed because a lot of Santoku scream home cook, or if you've got small hands and literally cramp up trying to wield longer blades, this is gonna do wonders for you. Because it just looks like a badass Japanese knife. I say it all the time because it's so true. You use these tools every single day. Why not be stoked about what you choose to put in your hands? Now, it's not all puppies and rainbows. As someone who truly fell in love with the 9.4 inch length on a chef knife, I can feel the throttling that goes on in my prep when I use this knife. I'm cutting carrots for stock with the Aura 2 or my Misono UX10. I can line up six carrots just fine to chop them up quickly. With this guy, I max out at just four carrots, right? Because they just don't fit on the length of the blade. That's a 30% slowdown on my prep time on that task. And I could feel it. I could be like, why is this taking me so long? I feel like that trade-off for light, nimble, precise work might make this a less multi-purpose knife than everyone wants you to think. If you're someone that prides themselves in how fast you can get through a case of potatoes, and if some of those tubers are like the Chernobyl massive sized ones that are like definitely not normal vegetables and they're actually longer than this blade, this is gonna be frustrating for you. So weigh that for yourself. You know your prep list better than I do. If you want to use this for butchery, I think you'd probably be okay. The two points that I always think about is the thickness of the blade and the hardness of the steel. If you're doing a lot of riding the bones butchery, this might be too thin for you. If you're doing small fish like mackerel and you do the technique where you just kind of slice through those softer bones, or even if you skin a lot of smaller fish, this might actually make you a speed demon. If I had to think of a practical use case where this really shines with protein, it's like if you have a carving station where you could literally break down your station for service, so you've got a little board that you use to carve lamb on because you're doing a tasting menu size portion where you just have to cut something in half or knock the ends off, that's where I can see this knife crushing it. Because then you can literally go right into chopping some extra parsley for yourself or hashing some shallots if you find yourself running out. Maybe you're shaving some radishes for your station partner if they're busy or if you need an out of place and this kind of just sits right next to your towel or on your board right on top with the smaller footprint. That is TSD. With that, I think I've covered a lot of the who is this for and should you buy it part of the video. Speaking of the buying part though, I've actually got three of these in my possession. They're still in the packaging with the Sayas. They have not been touched. One of these is for a giveaway. Go ahead and do those three YouTube algorithm helpers. Make sure you're subscribed, get some color on that like button and comment at me with something that kind of helps me get to know you folks a little bit more. Let's go with the most recent thing you've learned or picked up, whether that's technique focused or management focused, maybe you're in school, you just got done with a class that gave you an insight on something. And I'm all for if it came from a mentor or a coworker in real life. But if you're coming to this video from an awesome podcast or a video or a blog post or an article you read and you can link it up, I don't have the audacity to think that I'm the end all be all information for you folks. So please share because it might help someone else too, especially if it helped you out. If you're new to my channel and you are confused about why I'm talking about this stuff, hello, I'm Justin and I make videos about how to progress your career as a professional chef. And if you like the sound of that, go ahead and hit subscribe because I publish new videos every single week on this channel. I have an industry podcast called The Emulsion that has different episodes every single week where I talk about news and I interview industry professionals. On Patreon, I publish behind the scenes content to my amazing supporters there. So if you're keeping track of math at home, you're like one for giveaway, what are the other two for? Well, these were actually extended to me from Sharp Edge Shop as ones that they gave me permission to sell. And most of you know, I'm pretty gear focused on this channel and I would love to eventually have 
have a shop page of my own. So if you'd prefer to buy direct, know that 100% of the price you pay goes straight towards supporting this content. And doing that gives me the opportunity to do some more awesome stuff, get some new gear in to review. And if you go ahead and decide to purchase these from me, I will throw in a signed note from me to you with this. And you'd actually be one of the first testers of this purchase experience through my site. So if you want more info on developments like this, if you want to get a heads up whenever I launch new products on the shop page, make sure to get signed up in my email newsletter because that's where I'm able to directly offer things that's available on the site. Maybe we should announce the Chef Knife Bonanza video winners, huh? Congratulations to the winner of the Maru Nagomi Santoku. The three Kangshen winners are, congratulations for winning the Stern Steiger Arminus, which I actually heard didn't do so great on Kickstarter. Someone can give me an update on that, even though I have no control over that kind of fulfillment process. I always feel like I should apologize for things like that to you folks. It's not always easy to vet that stuff. And lastly, the Sabol Brother Chef Knife goes to, if you are someone that liked or watched or commented or shared those videos, I appreciate you. It's always fun for me to make those and I can't wait to continue to create gear videos like this to help you get some insight on this amazing time to be a chef where the landscape is so competitive and everyone's making fantastic stuff for us to use and cook and create with. Thank you as always for your attention. My name is Justin Kana and I hope you have a good one. Mm -hmm.